In this episode, Tamara Lackey delivers part one of her interview with internationally renowned wedding photographer, Jessica Clare. Adorama TV presents The Redefined Show with Tamara Lackey, where she talks with creatives who make it all work, bringing their best creative and business tips to you, along with fresh ideas and equipment favorites. Welcome, Jessica. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you very much. How long have you been shooting? I've been shooting for about 12 years. I was actually trying to figure yeah. it out the other day. More than 10, less than 15, somewhere in there. And you started like as an assistant at a studio in North Carolina. Carolina. That's right. <laughs> yes, I started shooting when I was in college or like about halfway through college and I worked for four years as an associate and um, office manager for a big studio in North Carolina. Right. And then when I graduated, I went off on my own at that point. Yeah. And when you went off, you like, you moved, you changed, you started a brand. Um, you did it really well. What do you think you did really well? Thank you. Um, I think that I was... I think I was right on with my timing of things. I, I actually didn't do it right away. I stayed in North Carolina another two years um, after I went out on my own. Mm -hmm. And then when I decided to move to California, it was right when like blogs and things like that were starting to get a little more popular. And also when those wedding chat boards on the knot and other like boards like that were- Wait, what year are we in? That was 2004. 2004, okay. Okay, we're starting to get more popular also. Yeah. So it was kind of easy for me to make the move at that point because the internet had gotten so big that it was, I was kind of, pretending I was living in California yeah. for a good year before I actually moved there in 2005. <laughs> Just like blue screen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you couldn't tell. I mean, anybody online would have thought I was already there. So I started smoking there way before I actually yeah, yeah, moved. Yeah, smart. And you would just fly out. Well, I moved to California and then I started booking there, but I was actually flying back to North Carolina every week or every other week for about a year because I didn't stop booking there either. Wow. So I okay. just kind of like double yeah. coasting you were like for a while. Invisible online. Like, where is she? I don't know. <laughs> like, okay. is she here? Is she there? Yeah. Where is she going? All right. Yeah. And so by the time you got there, you had a, a business going. Yeah, because I had taken that year to kind of shoot in both places. I didn't turn down any job anywhere, even if okay. it meant that on Thursday and Friday I would be shooting in California and then I would fly, I'd take a red eye on Friday night and be shooting in North Carolina on Saturday. I turned yeah. nothing down. Down. Why? Because I, first of all, needed to pay my bills. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> I had gone from North Carolina, where I was paying $400 a month, mm -hmm. and to California, where I was and paying $1,000 a month right. with no business. Right. So I had to, I mean, I had to pay the bills. So yes. I was pretty much willing to do what that meant, even if it meant, you know, sucking up the cost of paying for the flights to get where I needed to get. Did you find that it accelerated your, just like, I got this because you're shooting so much now? Yeah, yeah, and actually the year that I moved to California, I also second shot 20 weddings just to learn my way around the market and to like get familiar with the venues and other vendors and other kind of factors at play right. in the wedding scene there because it's not just about photography. Right. So I, I wasn't promoting my own business working for other people, but I was at least able to say if I got an inquiry for the montage, oh yes, I have shot there before, I've been there before. Yeah. So that way I wouldn't feel like I just dropped in from North Carolina and didn't right. know anything about anything. And you were pretty savvy when you say it was right when the blogs were going, you were really savvy quickly about um, the look and feel of your site, your brand, your um, your image, your uh, awareness of SEO. Did how did that come to you? Did just something you just you educated yourself? You got great advice. Well, I did get some good advice. Gary Fong had just started a blog, and he's like, "Blogging is going to be great." And I was like, "All right, I'll try it." And at the time, I wasn't blogging anything interesting. I was just blogging personal things, whatever I was doing, just here and there, sporadically. Yeah. Like what? Like I took a trip to Washington D.C. with friends, and I blogged a picture of me on the escalator with a couple of my friends. Right. I mean, nothing that anybody would find really interesting. But then I started posting just like a little sneak peek from every wedding that I would shoot mm -hmm. and people were more interested in that and it turned out to be not just brides but photographers as well so I was like oh well, look at that people are actually reading this and so that gave me the encouragement to continue on with it and so that's really the reason that I kept it up because people were going to notice if I didn't otherwise I probably would have let I it die because yeah. Yeah. you have a very active blog um, a lot of comments a lot of interaction how much time a week do you spend on it I spend a lot of time on it um, like roughly do you have a rough idea I, let me think. If I blog twice a week, it probably takes me 
a good four or five hours to do that. Yeah. If I blog three times a week, it goes up a lot because then I'm actually having to think of and produce additional content. Right. So I would say like 10, 12, maybe 15 hours a week doing just blogging. I think the thing that takes the most time is me picking the images that I want to go on there and right. want to show. Because I'm always trying to find a balance between showing the things that I want to show because I love showing them and also showing things that I know might get pinned on Pinterest or that the client might be like, I gotta send my friends to yeah. see that. So I only want to post things that I love, but I also want to post things that my clients are going to love. Right. So that way I get the more comments and more feedback and more. Traffic. And you show and you show a lot. I do. Yeah. I show about 50 to 100 images from any wedding for, for each post. Mm -hmm. And so, it, where did you come up with that? Was that just to like, give them more variety from which to choose? No, it, I go through the wedding and I just go through and I pick the ones that I love. Yeah. And it's always between 50 and 100. And then I cut out anything that's uh, a duplicate and that knocks down like probably another 20. Yeah. And then I just work with the rest. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, you just became a new mom. I did. Like yes. six months ago? Six months. He's six months. Okay. Yeah. How are you finding, like, I've been shooting, I'm successful, I've got a career, I'm well known, and now I'm a mom. Like, how are you finding that transition? Really, really hard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really hard. It's getting better now. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard. Yeah. But it's, it is getting a lot better. Yeah. I think for a while I sort of tried to go on like like nothing happened. Right. <laughs> and that, especially when you have a successful career in your belt, that's what most people do. Yeah. And then, and, and you, so you went on, like nothing's happening and you're what, not sleeping? Well, I had the baby August 2nd. Mm -hmm. I had four weddings in August also. Wow. Like I was shooting a week and a half, two weeks after my C-section. Holy crap. <laughs> so, yeah. Tell me had someone else left the bags. I did not carry the bags. Okay. Yeah. I brought two other people with me at that yeah. wedding, another full shooter. Did you at shooter. all consider having somebody else do it? No. I was Why? going to that wedding in a wheelchair. I was definitely <laughs> going. <laughs> Why? Well, first of all, I don't want to give back that money. Yeah. And second of all, the baby it was late. <laughs> this is his fault. Blame it on the kids, right? Um, the baby was two weeks late, so I yeah. didn't anticipate him being late. I didn't anticipate a C-section. And by the time the wedding actually came around, I I was okay. Like I could. I could deal with it for eight hours. Like yeah. My philosophy on shooting a wedding is no matter what's going on, no matter how sick I am, I can get past anything for eight hours. Right. And then, you know, it might take me that time. It took me like a good week to recover. But for eight hours, you're, there's so much adrenaline and good meds that they give you when you've had a major <laughs> surgery that, you know, I was just going to make it work. Did your photography improve on drugs? What's that? Was your photography <laughs> like better or worse or you're just I steady. actually think it was pretty good. Yeah. Like it looks like any other running that I've shot. I think I did a good job with it. Yeah. It's like playing pool. If you have like a glass of wine, your game gets better. <laughs> yeah. Like five or six. Mm. Yeah. That Towards the end of the night, like I couldn't like squat down as well and that kind of thing. So I did kind of let my second shooter take on a little bit more of that type yeah. of shooting. But it was okay. I mean, it wasn't as bad as it could have been. So, uh, film. Tell me, because I know you've been doing a lot of flirting with film. I dabble a little. <laughs> what exactly? How would you define your flirtation, your dabbling, um, your dabblement? Well, we just started dating like about a year ago. <laughs> I don't sell film to my clients. Like my clients don't pay extra for film. Right. Um, I shoot it if it's good. Like if, if it's beautiful light and detail and people aren't moving too much and right. you know I have time to sit there and think about it yeah. I enjoy shooting film because those shots are generally my favorites when I get them back why, and, why are they your favorite? Well I think part of it is because there's so much thought that goes into it and there's so much expense that goes into shooting oh, film that I'm certainly it. not like rapid firing it or just shooting anything yeah. so I'm only shooting stuff with film if it looks really really good yeah. clean out of the camera I mean I wouldn't shoot anything with film that I didn't know was going to look good Right. so when I get it back it all looks good because I pick and choose very yeah. carefully what I'm shooting with yeah. it. But, and then I just kind of put it in with my gallery mixed in with the rest of the stuff. So I don't even necessarily talk about it with right. my clients or, or promote it. I just enjoy doing it. Yeah. It, it's funny because um, I find that that's one of my uh, major hurdles that I, I, I've come to recognize that if I work really hard for a shoot, like say for instance I'm photographing kids mm -hmm. and someone's having a complete meltdown and tantrum and I get some amazing shots of them. And I know that that was like a millisecond that I was barely able to grab. Right. Like if I lay that picture down next to a photograph of like a child model, mm -hmm. that you know everything is amazing in it. The one might be technically better and more eye-catching, but I know how much I work for that other one. And I really <laughs> like. I'm like, this is so good. That was fine. You know. Yeah. Like, and, and then when it comes to portfolio time, you have to figure out how to remove yourself to be able to see them better. It's true. It's true. Stay tuned for part two where Tamara continues her discussion with internationally renowned wedding photographer, Jessica Clare. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need.
For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.